Hello everyone, my name is Marvin Antiniedo and welcome to the new episode of The Outsider. Japan is known for their traditional arts and distinctive culture. It is the home of technology and comic as well as cartoons known as manga and anime. It has a reputation for today. Many young Filipinos dreamed of living a life in Japan for its amazing nature and serene ambience. But have you ever wondered why many old Philippine artists and writers are mostly mad at Japanese? I'm gonna stay right by your side. Around 1941 to 1945, the Japanese occupancy in the Philippines began. During this time, Philippine literature was again interrupted in its development. Yun nga, bago magsimula yung World War noong 1945, uh, nandito na sa Pilipinas yung mga kapon. So, hindi sila nagpunta dito para magbakasyon, kundi para sakupin tayo, para mapalawak ang panilang military forces. At the same time, nagdulot ng matinding, ano, parang dark age ulit sa Pilipinas ang um, pananakop na ito ng mga kapunis. Lalo na sa mga writers natin o sa ating mga panunulat ng mga panahong yun. Kasi, nalimitahan yung kanilang uh, pagiging lalambag ng mga kanilang uh, katang siling. At dahil nga yung mga hapon ay hindi ganun kagalingan sa English, uh, tayo ay protektado ng mga Amerikano ng mga panahon yun. Ipinagbawal nila ang pagbukas ng mga pagpribado pang publikong establishmento na nag-promote ng ano, American government. So, pinasarado rin yung mga pahayagan at pinagbawalan din yung mga Pilipino na maggawa o maglambas ng mga uh, newspapers at mga pahayagan na nakalambag sa wigang umpis. Kasi nga, takot sila sa mga Amerikano na matali yung kanilang pwersa na manggaling dito sa Pilipinas. Yun na nga dahil sa istrikto sila, mahigpit yung pagbabantay nila sa mga pahayagang bukas. At hinamakan din nila yung isa sa mga pinakamalala akong pahayagan ng mga panahon ngayon, yung liwayway. So yung liwayway nga, yun niya isa dun sa mga malalaking establishment to na nagpapalaga na kung naglalabas ng mga imprenta o ng mga pahayagan ng mga panahon panahon yun. So, ang umawak noon ay si Ishiwara. Si Ishiwara ay isang Japanese uh, general na nanguna sa pagsakot dito sa Pilipinas. Isa siya sa mga nanguna. So, siya yung umawak noon. Kaya, mas lalong naging mahigpit yung pag-check sa buwan po ng pinagkagawa ng mga Pilipino writers ng mga panahon yun. During this time, Philippine literature was mainly focused on short plays, poems, and short stories. So the following are the meanings and the examples of these literary pieces that our Fili Filipino ancestors wrote during that time. I hope you enjoy the Filipino poetry during the Japanese era. First is the Filipino poetry during the Japanese era. So as we all know, Filipino poetry during this time commonly have themes about life, love, nationalism, uh, life in the barrios, and the arts. Uh, the most common kind of uh, poetry during this time are the following, the haiku, the tanaga, and the usual form. Speaking of haiku, haiku is a poem of free verse that the Japanese like. It was made out of 17 syllables divided into 3 lines. The first line had 5 syllables, the second line has 7 syllables, and the third has 
five syllables. So the haiku is allegorical in meaning, and it it have a wide scope of range. The next kind of poem is the tanaga. So same as haiku, tanaga also have an allegorical meaning, a wide scope, and the lines are divided also into four lines. Each line had seven syllables measure in rhyme. And the other one is the karaniwang anyo or the usual form. Like those that are earlier discussed in this uh, in this chapter or in this series of discussions, the usual form is the kind of poetry that we are always doing, uh, that we are always using or it can be seen anywhere. So just from the word usual form, it's the karaniwang anyo. So the following are the people who are involved in this kind of poetic uh, actions. They are the poets of that time. So first is Gonzalo Flores, Edilponso Santos, Rodolfo Rosales, and many other Filipino writers uh, that are not mentioned in the book. So. Uh, Gonzalo K. Flores wrote his haiku uh, with the title Tutubi, which in English is The Dragonfly, and The Invitation or The Anyaya. So the following video clip is the representation, action placed with regards to his haiku. Ilang damo sa tahimik na ilog. Halika, sinta. Corporeal, anibaporeal, blood, bold, on the hand of time. The next one is the Tanaga. And Edelfonso Santos is one of the writers of the Tanaga at that time. And... As what we can observe, the Naga has seven syllables, consisting of lines and rhymes. The following video clip uh, is the example of uh, the Tanaga at that specific era. Tumatawag sa langit, sana ay wag magalit, tadhana ay makita, malimot. And speaking of usual form or the karaniwang anyo of the poetry, I have here prepared one of my very own uh, poem and I like it much and I hope you'll enjoy watching this one. Thank you! Blue skies above the lonely streets Confused people live in fear, faces shrouded in sheets, in a world where nothing seems clear. The Filipino Drama at the Japanese Period The next one is the Filipino Drama during the Japanese period. Um, the Filipino Drama during this time experienced a lull because of many playhouses and theaters are closed. Uh, they have been put into close by the Japanese uh, because most of the theaters are American based and some Filipino writers uh, rewrote or translated some of the plays some of the drama that are written into written from English or American English and translated it into Filipino in order for our Filipino drama this time to keep on moving. Some of them or some of the translators were Francisco Soc Rodriguez, Alberto Concho, and Narciso Pimentel. Also, they founded the organization of the Filipino players named Dramatic Philippines. After they established the Dramatic Philippines, some of the players are the following. First is Jose Maria Hernandez who wrote the Pandaypira. 
The next one is Francisco Soc Rodriguez who wrote Sa Pula Sa Puti. And the other one, Clodwaldo del Mundo who wrote Bulaga. So Bulaga is an expression from a uh, hide and seek game. And then the other one is Julian Cruz Bal Maceda. So he wrote, Sino ba kayo? Dahil sa anak, higanti ng patay. So those people are the keys or they are the person who give life to the Filipino drama during the Japanese period since many of the theaters or many of the playhouses are close B because they are filming American films and that's what the Japanese hate and because of that the drama become lull and then they think of a way in order for it to exist during that time and still uh, do some dramatic uh, playwrights and because of that we have history of referring to them as of now the Filipino short story at the Japanese period now for the third part we have the Filipino short story during the Japanese era in contrary to the Filipino, Filipino drama Filipino short story become uh, widespread and it is because many wrote short stories among them were Dibay Y. Arceo Macario Pineda Serapin Gunigundo Lopez Lim Ligaya Perez and Gloria Guzman So the best writing in 1945 were selected by a group of judges composed of Francisco I. Casiano Jose Esperanza Cruz and Antonio Rosales including Clodwaldo del Mundo and Teodoro Santos as a result of the selection, the following got the first three prizes. The first place is Narciso Reyes's The Lupang Tinubuan. The second prize, Liwayway Arceos, Puhaw Ang Tigang na Lupa. And the third prize is the NBM Gonzalez's Dunsod na yon at Dagatdaga. In short, Philippine short story became a boom during this time mainly because they cannot write uh, English literary pieces and now they are doing short Philippine-based uh, language uh, literary pieces which is easier for them and for most of the writers and that's why it became a trend and many and many uh, writers wrote short stories during this time because of that there came that an event of uh, competition all throughout the Philippines uh, about making their different, their very own short story. Okay na mga ating naging topic sa araw na ito mga kaibigan at para may summarize natin itong lahat ng ating mga natutunan at may discuss sa uh, oras na ito o uh, nabigyan kayo ng kaalaman tungkol sa mga nangyari sa Pilipinas noong panahon na pananakot ng mga buwan dito in terms of literary works and literary pieces. Una, nag-stopper tayo sa oppression dahil tinanggal ang um, lahat ng mga pahayagan. Ipinasarado ang lahat ng mga pahayagan and teatro na nag-alambag ng mga literary pieces na nakalagay sa week of bliss. And pangalawa, ay Sumabong ang Filipino literature during this time. So nabigyan tayo ang mga ang Filipino literature ay nabigyan ng magandang break during this time. The third is that uh, the Filipino drama became live kasi nga pinasara yung mga teatro. The, and the last one is that the Filipino short story uh, became a trend during this time Kasi ito ay madaling gawin Nakasulat sa week ng Tagalog O sa kahit anong week ng Pilipino At yun ang summary ng ating pinag-usapan sa araw na ito Maraming salamat, hope to see you soon And ingat sa COVID-19